Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 465, Aging, What Is It and What Causes It? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the continuing conversations that we have about medicine and health in the United States is about the, the reality of equilibrium and homeostasis. Living organisms are driven by their nature to try to seek a state of homeostasis. They get knocked off balance, they fight to get back into balance. They have an injury, they have an illness, they have a disease, whatever, and they try to come back to balance. And what we're going to talk about today are the two regulatory systems that are processing in our bodies as organisms from, from the moment of conception. Then we start to grow and develop and expand, and then we start to decline and age and die. And in the meantime, we're trying to our best to stay in balance. Mm -hmm. So the two systems are anabolism and catabolism. The anabolism system is the growing. When you're a baby and your cell, your actual cell numbers are increasing, the, the number of cells in your brain, in your heart, your body, uh, you, you are born and you grow and you develop and you mature and evolve into the person that you are. And you reach a point in time, where, and that system, the an, anabolic or an, anabolism system is predominant. The catabolism system is working. Every day some of those cells die, bones get broken, something doesn't grow the way it's supposed to, you get an infection, and they're fighting it, and the other system tries to overcompensate that or overwhelm that drive and keep you in a healthy balance. You reach a point in life, 40s, 50s, whenever that comes, where the anabolism system is not dominant anymore. It begins to recede. It declines, and you stop making some of the central parts of your healthcare system that you used <laughs> to make. Mm -hmm. And then the ca catabolic system, the destructive system that breaks it down, mm -hmm. dominates. And then you have more brittle bones, you lose muscle structure, you get weaker, you, you can't mm -hmm. run as far, jump as high, you can't do the things that you've been able to do. And, and I can tell you personally, for myself as I have aged, I've gotten really angry when I discovered I can't make my body do things I used to make mm -hmm. it do readily. Mm -hmm. and, and you become concerned about that. Medicine has now found a way to supplement the anabolic system that used to be the driving force so that it's not as much imbalance in it. So that it is and the imbalance. catabolic so it's, it's, so it's more imbalance, it's not as imbalanced. Cat catabolism. Yes. So so it's so that's a, a really nice description of the balance that we have going on in our bodies. Mm -hmm. This balance goes all the way down to the cellular level. The cells are always growing and being destroyed in this microscopic world uh -huh. that we don't, we're not aware Little of. Little armies of soldiers yeah, inside yeah, your body. Ki kind of, it is. Yeah. I mean, se uh, in seven years, every cell in your body will have been, the cells will have died and been taken over by new cells. Mm -hmm. That's in the homeostatic body, the balanced body, the body that is an adult, so it's no longer growing, and, but it's not aging yet. So in that body, when we're healthy, young, fertile, that body is perfectly balanced between growing and breaking down. So, such, so you go from cells to tissues. So if we have a tissue like bone, bone is not a static tissue. It looks static, it looks like it's the same bone every single day on x-ray. But microscopically, your bone is being built and dissolved every day. New cells, calcium is being deposited and old cells are being broken down and taken away and it goes out through, through your kidneys, through your intestines. So you are always changing. And so that's the, that's the tissue level. Then we get to uh, the system level, which is, Mu say the muscular system in your body. 
One of the things that's really interesting that you see in children as their anabolic system is really moving and they're growing is they go from little tiny little skinny little arms to arms with distinctive muscles in them. Mm -hmm. And you can see the muscles growing as they even as they get taller, you see that they become mu muscular, especially boys because they don't have that estrogenized skin over it, but you see them growing mu muscle. Yeah. So they get to a point where we all get to a point where our growth stops and then we are just balanced between growing and breaking down. But most of us know if we go to the gym and we work out that that part of our body, like today we did upper body, or excuse me, we did lower body. I wish we'd done upper body. So we did lower body. So tomorrow I won't work out my lower body because we know that when you work out, you break down more muscle tissue than if you were doing nothing. And you have to give your body time to actually regrow the muscle and that happens the second day the day after you work out so you don't want to you don't want to keep working out that part of your body because then you're not going to get the muscle growth and that you normally would with with exercise so you also have to give your body extra protein extra water extra electrolytes to make that process work mm -hmm. so it's not just it's not just a process that's going to go by itself but you're going to grow muscle, then you're going, to, you're going to break it down with exercise, then it's going to grow and it'll be a little bit higher because of the exercise you did. But that's a whole body system that is actually growing and shrinking as we speak. And you can see the difference. After you work out, your muscles are bigger. They're swollen with water. Then they break down that night and the next day they're even bigger and stronger. So that's a system. This is how your body works all day long. It's what happens when um, but, we but age. But it doesn't work as you age when you stop producing the, the anabolism part that dominates mm -hmm. when you're young well, you and makes you it. grow. You still do it. You still make cells and break down cells, but you make fewer cells and you break down more. So what you've told me is that men, as men and women age, if they don't have a particular ingredient, they're not, they don't have the the capacity to manufacture muscles. Right. So if you stay. work out and you don't have and you are in this catabolic stage, then you can't grow muscle. You just get tired after you work out. It's not really helpful except to burn calories. So what do I need that allows me to still build muscle when I'm in my 70s? So believe it or not, <laughs> but yeah. Believe it or not, the anabolic hormone, there's there's two really, but the anab primary one is testosterone and it comes from ovaries and testicles. And we have the most of it when we're in our fertile life. Mm -hmm. So it's really our gonads that run our aging system. When our gonads no longer make enough for men or in women don't make any, then we lose our muscle, we start to shrink, osteoporosis takes over because our bones, the anabolism of our bones goes down and our catabolism goes up and we start, using up our bones, so, breaking it down. And so people that don't replace the testosterone as they age, their bones get more brittle. And of course, that's a problem with the elderly. And doctors and nurses will tell you, and hospice workers will tell you, when they start falling and breaking bones, very often you can put a six month time limit mm -hmm. on it. That because they're not gonna heal. Life's over. Yeah. And you can't heal without, you can't heal well without testosterone and one other hormone that testosterone stimulates and that's growth hormone. So those two hormones are your an are primarily your anabolic hormones. In okay. women, estrogen acts as an anabolic hormone and helps bones thicken. So as we age, the organs in our body that make that hormone stop making enough of it or making it at all. Right. In women, they but stop making it at all. we can replace it in, in, with bioidentical forms. Our mm -hmm. body can't tell the difference. Just and, like what we made before. Yeah, and you can put that in somebody's body and then they have it and it helps delay the dominance of the catabolic system, right. the breakdown system. It balances. Okay. So basically you're balancing this system that's always breaking down with cells that are always building. So we don't see osteoporosis in our patients who take testosterone. We don't see what they call sarcopenia, which, you know, the little old people that kind of like And if you've started like on that journey, can you come back from it? Osteoporosis, with, you can. You can reverse that? Yes, and some of the sarcopenia you can, but the part that you can't reverse is if you've lost so much bone in your in your upper back mm -hmm. that it's crushed like this and it's bending your head over yeah 
that's not going to actually Can't build recover that. back up. Okay. So you'll thicken your bones, but they are they're not going to straighten up. Okay, so you so, can prevent the brittleness. You can maybe delay or, or avoid breaks, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get back that upright posture that you had. Right. Okay. That's right. So, so there's certain things like um, uh, some of some of the diseases that we have, like um, autoimmune diseases, break down your joints and break down uh, your um, your ligaments that are around the joint. And when we give testosterone, we often can decrease the inflammation, decrease the the uh, breakdown and give them back the bone and the structure that that they had before, but not. We usually don't turn it all the way back. So it usually it, gets better. It looks better, and they don't have the pain, but it doesn't. It's not completely better if we've allowed the the uh, disease to go become make that make people have kind of deformed hands. You say on a regular basis in these podcasts that the real danger is inflammation that that mm -hmm. is the catabolic destructor and it messes up your mm -hmm. joints, your ligaments, your bones, and mm -hmm. that if you replace your testosterone, testosterone fights inflammation. Yes, it does. And, and that helps really restore helps. the balance that you need to have. Right, so, so if you have inflammation, uh, basically it causes you to have uh, plaque on the inside of your blood vessels. It breaks down your joints. It breaks, it's breaking down muscle tissue. It's breaking down, one of the big things is it breaks down your brain and gives you dementia. So. I have inflammation in my brain? Yes, yes. It can have inflammation in your brain. Then be a hothead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it does, yeah, inflammation usually makes a joint hot. Yeah. But um, people who are, um, are obese and have inflammation aren't necessarily warmer than other people. But uh, inflammation actually shows up when your normal anabolic system starts dropping. Okay. And Eventually, the catabolic system will win. Eventually, Eventually, the system ages beyond its ability to support and maintain life. Yeah. We're the but your goal the is not primarily, specifically, directly to increase lifespan. Your mm -hmm. goal is to increase health span. Even though Tell me what people, you mean by health span. Even though I mean, people can, live longer, yes. if they are not being broken down all the time with catabolism because that causes disease, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to make people's health span longer, meaning they will be healthy all the way to the end and have maybe have a six month um, illness and die. You were showing me a, a quotation from mm -hmm. a, a doctor that had been writing on this topic. Mm -hmm. and you thought it was impressive, I, mm -hmm. I think it would be worth, worth sharing. So this is, um, I should name him, Dr. Sandeep Klosa. He's an endocrinologist and he spoke at Endo 2019 this year. And he said, we're not even focusing that much on lifespan. We are really focusing on health span. We're all going to get old, but can we maintain a more productive life for our lifetime? However, how long that is. What, however long that is. Our goal is that whatever time we have, we spend it in the best possible health and productivity so we can feed ourselves, work, do the things that make life worthwhile. So Still contribute to our community, not be a cost factor so for So we're not in a nursing home and have a better quality of life. Yeah. So he's right on in this quest to try to help people have their lifespan be what it is, but their health span be longer. So what we see is people going into nursing homes. I don't know, not everyone has experience with this, but I had family members with, with this, and you had a family member living in your home instead of a nursing home. Right. So, so this is, it's, it's, it's exhausting for everyone. It is a terrible thing to be um, disabled and, and unable to take care of yourself. You don't want to do that to your family or your children. Right. At least I don't. And uh, you don't want to be the caretaker either. It's really hard, and it's really impossible to live a real life and be a caretaker as well. So our goal is to be healthy longer. Ide try to get to ideal weight, get more muscle, less fat, and that's what, that's what testosterone and growth hormone do. Mm -hmm. And what happens when we have less muscle and we get fat instead, so we replace it. Then we become insulin resistant, and then we get diabetes, and then our blood pressure goes up because we have and plaque and on the inside of our vessels. And catabolic systems just accelerate. They do. They decline, and 
then the question becomes quality of life. You know, what is your health span? And, and when you reach a point where your system is breaking down more and more every day, how independently can you live? Mm-hmm. How much can you be active? Uh, how well are you thinking? Can you manage your own money? Mm-hmm. Can you manage your own health care? Uh, so this is, for me, this is, this is not just a personal quest. It's a systemic issue for it's, the society. For me, this is, if, if we actually all could s- to read the research on testosterone and aging, yeah. we could actually empty, the next generation could not have the nursing homes we have. We would not have to spend money on that. We would not have to have people taking care of their family and their homes and and that takes them out of the workforce and they're unable to take care of their families as well right. if they have somebody they have to take care of. That's a 24-hour job. Yes, so yeah. it's one of those things that we could actually improve society by increasing anabolism with replacing a natural God-given hormone that we all have when we're younger and that we need as we get older with very little risk at all. Mm -hmm. That would be if we had that as a as a plan medically within 20 to 30 years we wouldn't have this mess. I hope. (laughs) I hope. I mean I don't think that will happen because there are just People don't want, to, or the, the system doesn't want to use a known hormone. They want to develop a new drug. They want to develop something that's, that's unique. And, and, but with unique, you get not natural, high risk, all kinds of other problems. This is something we know about. We've had this hormone. We know what it is. And it is just to replace that is cheaper, easier, healthier. And, and if you can just get back to natural, I guess, that would, that would make our lives much easier to live and live longer in a healthy fashion. Get back to equilibrium. Mm-hmm. It's all about balance. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.